Well, hello everybody. We have had a hurricane go through and I cannot fish. I'm not gonna be able to fish for several days. We didn't have much damage at all, just a few little limbs down and stuff. So we really uh, lucked out. Uh, but you know what I can do? I can fry some fish. So today we are going to fry fish on Nichols Retirement Empire. I have got some flounder right here that I caught a couple of weeks ago and I'm going to kind of talk y'all through how we do it and we are going to have a fish sandwich plus fish sandwich plus guys let's do it all right you can hear my neighbor out there in the background cutting up some stuff with his chainsaw um, the first thing that I'm going to do you can see the size of these are some pretty big fillets of fish my god there goes my dog I'm gonna have to let her out she is crying she's sad okay so the dogs are out but what i do when i fillet my fish is i'll take them and i'll put them in a pan like this where i can fill it up with water and i'll put those fillets in water and i keep it in my refrigerator and what that does <laughs> my dogs have these squeak toys um anyway that gets all the blood. Like you can see, there's not any blood. It pulls all that blood out of that uh, fish. If, you know, but flounder doesn't have much blood in it anyway. But anyhow, that's, that's what we do with all of our fish. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these up into smaller pieces. Cause these are pretty thick. And um, when you cook it, you don't necessarily want really big thick pieces, especially if you're frying it. Now, if you're uh, sauteing it or baking it or something like that, broiling it, yeah, you can get a little bit bigger pieces. But this, I'm going to cut up. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut it into a bunch of pieces. Right there. All right. And the other thing I do... Now, these pieces are already pretty thin. I'll just cut them in half. The other thing that I do is I set that fish out a good bit of time before I cook it so that it gets to room temperature. You don't want to put it down in that grease and that fish be real cold because it's going to bring the temperature of your grease down. So I'm going to get some grease in this skillet. And this is corn oil. And I want it to be fairly deep. Now the best thing to fry it in, best thing to fry chicken or fish in is peanut oil. But I don't have any peanut oil. So we're gonna use this and I'm gonna let this get hot. You want that grease probably in the neighborhood of 300 and 70 degrees 375 degrees uh, I'm not going to use the thermometer. I'm just gonna let it get hot as hot as I want to let it get if it doesn't get hot enough It's gonna get soggy. It's gonna be uh, greasy. So I don't want greasy fish I want fried fish, but I don't want greasy fish Let me show you what I put on my fish Now flounder is a really mild fish Okay, doesn't have a really strong fish flavor so once I get my fish out of the water and I let it sit out a while, I'll pat it dry with a towel. It's pretty dry, all right? I've patted it dry with a paper towel and I'll go through it. I'm gonna put one little layer of kosher salt on it. Not a lot because the stuff that we are using is a little salty. If you put, if you put it on both sides or you put a whole lot of salt on there, it's gonna be too salty, all right? I like to use a little Tony's um, anything, if you, if you don't have anything like this, just use some uh, black pepper and a little red pepper and you'll be fine, okay? But I like to use this right here. Any kind of little Creole or Louisiana kind of seasoning I like. And I don't put a whole lot on there. Just put a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. You want to be able to taste the fish. And I'm just going to put it on one side too. Now if I wanted a little bit more flavor to it, Put it on both sides. I'm just going to put it on one for right now. 
and that's all I put on it. That's all the seasoning. Now you do that according to your taste. Okay, but what I want to taste is the fish. All right, then I put cornmeal mix on it. You can see that's a white lily cornmeal, buttermilk cornmeal mix. The reason I use a cornmeal mix is because a cornmeal mix has flour in it already. So it's got flour and cornmeal. And usually what I do is I'll just take a spoon and I'll just coat each little piece with some cornmeal, cornmeal and flour. And it's got salt in it too. That's why I don't put salt on both sides. And then I'll kind of pat it in, make sure it's all covered. I'll turn it over. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Spoon some cornmeal on there. Now, if you like, um, you can put mustard on it. You can put it in milk. You can put it in egg. Um, you could do all kinds of things. Anything that's a binder, you could put on it. But I don't really need a binder because this fish is kind of moist right now already. And uh, flounder tastes so good, I don't want any other kind of flavor on it. But uh, a lot of people put their fish in mustard. And I put it in mustard a lot of times too. It's really good. So I'll put it in mustard and then do this. Or you can put it in milk or buttermilk or whatever and then do this. All right, so I'm going to make sure that's coated really good. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time. I'm not just going to throw this in there. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. And what's going to happen is when you let it sit, is it's going to start looking a little bit wet, okay? Like it won't look quite like it is now. It'll start looking wet. And then if you want to, you can put a little bit more cornmeal on it, and that'll make it extra crunchy. But I'm going to let that sit there about four or five minutes because i got to let that grease heat up anyway. So while we're doing that, I can take care of whatever other things I need to do if I'm cooking up some potatoes or whatever it is I'm doing. I can be working on that while I'm letting this sit. All right, so while we're waiting on that, uh, I'll put a little butter on this bread so I can go ahead and get it ready. Butter both sides of it. Tammy, you want tomatoes on your sandwich or what do you want? Is it regular loaf bread? No, it's these buns. Yeah, I'll have lots of tomato. Tomato? Okay. I got some lettuce out. Yeah, we're doing the supreme fish sandwich today it's gonna have everything everything i don't want that butter real thick but i want it to cover everything and there is not a better fish to eat than flounder we absolutely love flounder all right i've waited a few minutes here my grease is good and hot now you can go back and you can put a little bit more flour if you want to and, and cornmeal on this fish and it'll make it actually more crunchy. See how it's kind of wet looking on that side? And you can put a little extra on there if you want to. You don't have to. But if you like it really crunchy, that's a good idea. All right, the other thing is I'm not going to put all this in there, okay? It's going to cook three minutes on one side and two minutes on the other. And you can see I got it deep enough there where that fish is covered. Now that's all I'm putting in there. If you put too much fish in there, just like with chicken, if you put too much in there, you're gonna drop that temperature down And when you drop that temperature down, that fish or that chicken or whatever is going to get greasy. So I'm going to let it fish. I'm let it fish. I'm going to let it cook. It's already fish. I'm going to let it cook three minutes. I flip it over two minutes. And it's going to be ready. So let's get a... Uh, I'm going to get something out to put it on. 
And you can see it's floating. I don't have to mess with it. Now I got one piece in there that's so small that it'll probably be ready in four minutes, that piece right there. And I just want to make sure after I let it sit there about two minutes that it ain't stuck to the bottom of the pan. Now, if you don't let it get hot enough, it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan. All your coating is going to come off and it's going to be greasy. There's a lot of bad stuff that could happen if you don't let that grease get hot enough or if you put too much fish in there. Now, I probably could have put another couple of pieces, but I can't put all that fish in there. That's why I didn't do that. And you don't have to mess with it. Just let it cook. And actually, since this is deep frying, since I got plenty of oil in here, um, I'll probably let it cook four minutes instead of five minutes because these are pretty small pieces. That's the other good thing about cutting it into small pieces. You don't have to let it cook as long. Now I'm going to flip it over. I really probably get by without flipping it over, but I'm going to flip it over. But normally if the, my oil is kind of shallow or if my fish is real thick, I'll cook it three and two. Okay, but once I got this in here and I saw how much room I had, I'm going to do two and two. Now this is really going to be crispy now. It's going to be completely sealed. The coating will. And the coating is going to be crispy. The fish is going to be nice and done. This piece right here is pretty thin too. Well, I don't know. They got a little thick. See how thick they are? I'll let them cook the whole two minutes. But again, just to explain it, I don't want the temperature to drop too much. Fish can cook if it's the right temperature and it stays the right temperature. Really, fish can cook in about three minutes and 45 seconds. Um, a pretty nice thick piece of fish. So, if I'm cooking a lot of fish in there, I'll do three minutes and two minutes because I have to flip it over. If I have my oil deep enough like this, then I can just cook it, you know, the four minutes. But if you have a nice coating on there, it's not gonna be dry or anything like that. All right, so there's my two minutes. And that fish right there, perfect. Shake a little of this grease off of it. Now my oil is still hot. I didn't crowd it. I didn't put too much stuff in there. So I can just go right on ahead put these other pieces in there and I'll do the same thing. I'll cook them for two minutes. I'll flip them over. That's a thin piece. So I'll probably take it out at three. Okay. So let's set my timer. Now the good thing about doing my uh, cornmeal like I do on that plate with that paper towel is I can just fold it up and throw it away. What's uh, what's left? Oh, Tammy wants a slice of tomato. Let's get her a slice of tomato. So let's look at this. The reason this is a fish plus sandwich is because we got a fish sandwich plus some more fish. Okay. But I'm going to break this open. And this fish is not going to be dry. It's hot. And it's crunchy. Now, you can cook it four minutes. You can cook it five minutes. As long as you got it coated real good. It's not going to be dry. It tastes fantastic. Mmm. Let's get this bread out. All right. But the main thing that you have to remember, as long as you seal it good with your coating, uh, you can afford to cook it a little bit longer. You don't have to, you know, be so careful with making it exactly the right time because it's all sealed up in there. It's going to stay nice and moist. Okay, so let's get over here, do 
NIDA. Ooh. Lettuce. It's going to be a lot. These pieces of fish. Look at that. Plus. Fish sandwich plus. Plus that. I'd have put no mayonnaise on there. That gone. And my other fish is ready. Hang on. Now see, look at the color. The color of this is the same as the color of that. Okay, because I didn't get that oil. Um, I didn't break down that oil by putting it on there. Okay, and it's already at the same time, so it doesn't hurt you to cook it in two batches. All right, so let's get her some mayo on here. Deconstruct this thing. Mayo. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay. Put that right there. I'm going to put this together. Probably should have left the sandwich together, but there you go, man. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Look at that sandwich right there. Oh, look at that. So let's take one bite of hers, and I'm gonna make me one. Y'all ready for this? It's gonna be crunchy. That's good stuff, man. I tell you, fry fish. Easy. Just don't skimp on the oil. Don't overcrowd your pan. Put whatever kind of binder on it you want. You don't even have to use a binder. Don't over season it, because fish is delicious on its own without all the seasoning on it. You got some good fried fish. My sandwich is gone. The plus fish is gone. Tammy's. I got half with the bread. Half with the, the bread. And all the fish. And all the delicious flounder. Oh, it's so good. Now. A few tips here. You can see there's grease out there. The time to clean this up is right now while it's still warm. Okay, so if you fry fish, you need to make sure that you clean it up pretty quick. But, but this oil, okay, some people will use this again for fish. That's fine. I don't like to do that. I like to get all new oil every time I make fish. You know, and if, but if you want to save it for money's sake or whatever, the way things are right now, then you can take it, you can run it through a, uh, you know, little sieve kind of thing like that, maybe, and uh, filter out that cornmeal because all that cornmeal that's, that's in there, when you refry your fish, is going to cook again. And you're going to get a little, you know, all that cornmeal is not going to be really that great so it's, it's good to clean it out if you can figure out a way to clean it out run it through some kind of little filter and save it or you can uh, just dispose of it and the way I dispose of it is I will take like a two liter coke bottle or a 16 ounce coke bottle something like that and uh, once that oil cools down I'll take a little funnel thing and put it on there and pour that grease down in uh, that bottle and that way it's all sealed up and i can put it in it's not going to get all in my trash and all over the place and well but that's what i do <laughs> there's all kind of things you can do but bottom line is i throw it out um and that's what we do with our grease because people always ask whenever we fry something like on tammy's channel what do you do with the grease I throw it away um we'll use i don't use ch fried chicken grease twice she will, but I won't use fried chicken grease twice. I won't use fish grease twice. Uh, vegetable grease twice, yes. We'll do vegetable grease twice. So that's that's the way we do it. Fish sandwich plus. Y'all make me one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll start fishing about three or four days. <laughs>